Okay, we are ready for day two of our texture project and you should have finished those steps yesterday. So if you didn't, you're not finishing them right now, you're moving on to day two. Here is what we are doing today. You're going to get another white piece of paper, just like yesterday. You're going to fold it and section it into six sections, writing your name on the back with pencil. You're then going to paint two sections using the saran wrap technique. You're going to paint two sections using the wax resist technique and two sections using the drip technique. Here is my finished product. And when you are done for the day, you will put it on the drying rack until class tomorrow. Okay, so let's take a look about at what we are going to do today. So now we have six more sections to do, and we're gonna do another technique, all right? So now we're going to do just plain red again, okay? I kind of spilled that a little bit, didn't I? That's okay. And we're going to use saran wrap. So on the front table, there should also be these pieces of saran wrap. And you'll notice that there's a little bit of um, paint on them from somebody else who used them, and that's okay, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint my two squares together at the same time. And yes, I'm dripping. Reminder, I'm doing this in a tiny little place, but when you do this, you're going to have your table and you'll have room to spread out. Okay? So, and you're also going to paint neater than I am. I'm doing this really fast so that you guys can get going today. Okay, so I'm going to paint two squares just red. Now, uh, as I know you have know and you have probably noticed, watercolors dry super fast, okay? So when I'm done, I'm gonna go back on top with some water and some more paint because for the saran wrap to stick, it needs to be really wet, okay? And you're gonna go back and you're gonna add saran wrap on top when you're done, okay? And what the saran wrap does is it pulls the paint. So I'm gonna go in and add more because I don't like how that's looking. It pulls and sticks to the paint. So look, I'm going to do that right now. Do you see how it's already clinging to it? So you have to work so fast. So I'm going to paint. And I'm going to set the saran wrap down right away. Because it should like stick. It should stick and cling to the paint. So I'm almost just going to paint a little spot. And then put the saran wrap right on. Okay, can you see how that's grabbing the paint. When it dries tomorrow, you'll come back and you'll peel it off and it will leave these cool textures all over your square. So I'm going to paint this part really fast. I'm going to set this saran wrap down. Okay, friendly reminder once again, the saran wrap doesn't have to touch every inch of your squares. Okay, it's okay. Set that down again. Do a little bit more. Okay, and now for the saran wrap to work, this is not like the bubble wrap. The bubble wrap you kind of printed and you took it off. The saran wrap you're going to leave on until your paper is dry tomorrow. So you're going to leave that there. All right. So that is the saran wrap. All right. We have two more techniques that we're going to do. The next one is what we call the wax resist technique. So you're just going to need red again for this. And you're going to need a red crown. Okay. So in these boxes, you're just going to draw some simple patterns um, with your red crown. Okay. You could even write MMS. And you can take your time on the cooler things than I did. And then when you're done, you're just going to paint over it with your red paint, okay? And it will resist the red crown. I have put some crowns up on the front table for you. So all the materials that you're going to need today are going to be up on the front table. Okay, so you're going to paint both of those with red watercolor. Once again, I'm doing this super fast. It's really sloppy. You guys are going to do a much better job than I am, right? Yes. Okay, now 
now we have two squares left and you're going to need red and black for this and we're going to do what I like to call the drip technique. So I'm just going to paint the whole thing red again. Lots of red. And then I'm going to get a ton of water in my brush. I'm going to get a little bit of black and I'm going to get more water. And I'm just going to drip some black paint. Okay. And kind of create like a, almost like a dalmatian texture. Okay. Super important though that you wash your brush out after using black because you don't want your red paint to get all messy. Okay. I'm also not painting very nicely. I mean, if I were taking my time and doing this, I would paint super slow back and forth. I would scratch like a moon. Not, once again, I'm going really fast for the purpose of this video. Okay, so there's a square. I'm going to get some black. I'm just going to get lots of water in my brush and I'm just going to drip some black all over. Almost like, almost like Dalmatian spots. Okay, and you're going to do your last two like that. Now, it's very possible that you don't get all of this done today, and if that is the case, that is okay. We will just keep going in this last period. This is the first time that I've done this project, so I don't really know how long it's going to take everybody, but we will find out together. I'd rather you focus on doing all the techniques correctly than making a mistake and then having to do it again. Okay, so there's your last six. And when you're done, you're going to put it on the drying rack. And then you are responsible for cleaning your table. You are responsible for cleaning all your materials and putting them away. And we will keep going tomorrow.